Bubble Bobble for the Atari ST. It's booting up now. It's the level, lovely, lovely title, title screen. I'm gonna say Lubble, Bubble. The default high score table has nobody passed round 30. And there's the credits, so I'm gonna press 1 for a one player game. Here we go. So, I think this is my fourth attempt at running this. Last time I got to stage 98. First time I got to stage 83. The last few levels are pretty hard, but it's mainly just about... If I did better on the earlier levels, I'd have more lives to spend on the last few levels. So you have eight credits. Each is four lives, plus the one you start with, which is another four lives. So, 36 lives to play the game with. Dilled out, oddly, four at a time, I guess. Just so you can know how many credits you had left. I don't know. If you play two-player, you share the credits. So, if I play really well, and I get to level 20 without any deaths, um, we can see what the secret room looks like. So, in the Atari version, the secret room... Well, it looks the same as in the arcade, but... Um... There's only one of them instead of there being three. Which is kind of weird. Like, you can get to the secret room three times in the game if you make it to level 40 without dying, which is pretty tough. But, um... In this version of the game, all three secret rooms have the same content, which is a bit weird. Alright, let's get those yellow tees. Hello, James Ed Smith. How's it going? The secret rooms don't actually matter for completing the game, they're just a cool thing you can see in the game. And for me as a kid, they really blew my mind because Dad and I played this game for a long time, like weeks. I actually I have no idea how long we worked on it, but we kept playing it and kept playing it. And then finally we saw this super special secret that we'd never seen before and like you it just blew my mind because you'd never expect to see it after that long something new um it had its own music it was spooky it had a secret alphabet and i only got to ever see it once <laughs> i had no idea what it meant i didn't have time to write down the secret alphabet we accidentally exited the room not knowing how it worked. But I don't know even know if I'm gonna get there, so I might be like hyping it up for nothing. So far so good, but there's 13 more levels. But I have to play perfectly to get to see it. And that's why it took so long to see it. Like, we just had to get that good at the game that we could one-shot the first 20 levels of the game. Yeah. 
And for me, I don't know, I was like five years old, so... That was... a very developing skill set. I mean, I guess. That blue end might have been nice, but... Generally, only the yellow T and green E are rare letters. Everything else tends to be easy to find. Does the ST version have the alternate modes of the arcade? Uh, I believe it does not. I did some investigation earlier. And... It doesn't even have a good and bad ending. It just has an ending. Which is odd. Ah. Okay, we're not going to see the secret rooms. It was just too fast. I had to get it out of that corner. I wasn't quick enough to dodge it. Um, the only difference between the secret rooms in the Atari ST version um, is they don't have the rascal that will chase you out of the room after a certain amount of time. So you could actually sit there and write down the alphabet if you want to like just wait around in there. Um, and also all three secret rooms are the same. But it's not like in the game the secret rooms actually say anything profound. Like the the main thing they're there to do is deliver the alphabet. It gives you hints about beating the boss, but they're like kind of cryptic and um doesn't really explain much at all. Uh, but they have an alphabet in there. They have like just the letters A to Z spelling it out. Uh, and that ties into a secret code at the end of the game. This version of the game does not have the secret code. Um, so it doesn't have super mode, which is just this game on hard mode. Oop. I just got an extend, because I got a, a red E balloon at the bottom of the screen there. You probably couldn't even see the E, but just touched it with my foot by accident. Not that I mind. Alright. Let's get this water going. Pop this shark before it gets mad. Hmm. I was considering going in there, but... Didn't feel safe to jump out of the stream. I'm gonna get a hurry up in a moment. There it is. Now I gotta get... Maybe I can get inside there to pop it. There we go. <laughs> so... Yeah, like, the main thing for the alphabet is to give you the secret code at the end of the game, how to unlock hard mode, which leads you to the, the true ending, where you save not just yourself, but your parents as well. But, uh... As far as I could tell, this game doesn't have... multiple endings. Which, to be honest, is not really that critical part of the game, or part of this game. Like, I, I still think it's a great version of Bubble Bobble. It's very playable. Tons of fun. It just doesn't tell you to play it again after you beat it and then tell you to play it again after you beat it again. It just has an ending. I don't know. <laughs> there we 
we go. Oh! Okay. None of that worked as I expected. Uh, but I'm okay. Why did I get that? There we go. <laughs> that went oddly. How do I end up in here? Oh no. Oh no, this looks cursed. Hope this fixes itself for next level. <laughs> Seems to be well. So that's a bug I've never seen before, and I don't know what happened exactly. But anyway, I, I think this is a good version of the game. It's pretty much the same as the Amiga version, which was, I believe, made by the same people. At the same time, probably has most of the same code in it. Okay, which direction are the sharks coming down? Here we go. Hmm. Okay, I'm in good shape, I think. Why did that pop? Oh, I'm getting a bogus meat factory raid. I'll have to address that when the level finishes. Oh, I want that tea. Oh, here, I can pop the uh, balloon with the lightning. Okay. It's this last shark to take care of. There we go. Ooh, a giant peach, and I can't get to it. I have to jump through the ceiling to get to it, which I don't think I can pull off right now. Hi there, Bogus Meat Factory. How's it going? You're playing uh, Brave Fencer Musashi? How's that been going? Now, this level can be tricky because the enemies kind of walk around in places that are hard to attack. Um, I'm gonna go after that green E, because the green E's are rare. That enemy's gonna be mad at me, but... We'll accept this. I should go for that little silver box, too. That'll get me a diamond later. A very big diamond. Okay, I don't know how to avoid them. Where are they going? And these fast ones are scary. Okay, here we go. Oh no! There we go. Just got it. Okay. Hi, J Rod. Oh, you're right at the end of Brave Pants and Musashi. I've only seen like. The first, I don't know how much of the game, maybe a quarter of it or something. It looked pretty good. My roommate had it when I was in university many years ago. And it looked like a nice game. So if I wait around, this third shark will come up. I didn't think it took that long. Hmm. And the other ones you kind of got to chase. It can be difficult. Oh, I could go for that potion. As long as I don't fall down. Yep, okay, I got it. Hmm, I don't think I can get all these clover. Maybe I can. The time's going to be tight, though. Because I can't go in the middle, because I'll... Okay, now I can't get them all. Oh, wait, maybe I still can. No, I don't have enough time. Or do I? Oh, not just pretty close. 
How did I choose this game for play? This this is the very first game that I ever loved, basically. I had this when I was like five years old. And played it and played it and played it. So, on this stage, if I hadn't died on stage 10, a special room would appear here, which I could enter and see a cool secret. Not critical or anything, but um, it's neat to see. But unfortunately, I had an incident on stage 10. Otherwise, I've been playing pretty well. Okay, hopefully this guy moves out of the way. There we go. If I don't get that one before it pops, it's really hard to get it out. Because then they get fast and you gotta jump up the in there with them. It's bad news. So yeah, we got an Atari ST when I was really young, and this was one of the first games we got for it. And my sister and I played it a lot, and my dad and I played it a lot. And I actually never got to the very end. We got to level 99, we beat level 99, and then the game crashed. And it was probably because it was a pirated copy. Oh, let me just grab that. So I don't believe I can get all these cookies in one player mode, because as soon as I jump into one of those areas on the left or right, I'll be locked inside forever, I think. even hard to get in there. So that's why I'm playing this particular version of Bubble Bobble. It's it's basically just Bubble Bobble. It's missing a few things from the arcade. Um, but, oh no. No! Uh, in a lot of ways, it's less cruel than the arcade, so... Might have been a better game for a kid to play. I mean, not that I would have ever had the opportunity to have an arcade machine in my home, but... This, you know, it's it's a good version of the game. It's got some differences, but I don't mind the differences. I'm not sure the differences are wholly bad, but some of them are a little bit disappointing. Once I knew about them existing in the arcade, but for the most part, it's it's a great game. I've been having a lot of fun playing it. So I played through the arcade one, just like quarter feeding, a few days ago. And I wanted to see if I could beat this one single player. Which is something I've never done. And I found myself really enjoying this game. It's still a great game after all these years. Hi there, Toxics. How's it going? This is the infamous popcorn level, which I think is one of the best levels in the game just because 
It's such a fun way to teach you about the fireball in a bubble. Or the... It's not a fireball, the flame bubbles. At least I think it's the first level with the flame bubbles. So, I think I'm doing pretty well so far. I think I've lost two lives, and I'm a quarter of the way through the game. So, I started with... Um... Not sure how... Uh, what was it? 36 lives? And... I think I'm at 37 right now, because I've gotten a couple of extras. Ooh. Almost got a bowling ball to the face. Oh, that's nice to get. Actually, I already had rapid fire, now that I think about it. I think I'm going to get a hurry up here, because... It's been taking a lot of time. Nope managed to beat the clock. All right, on to 27. So yeah, this is this is my fourth time trying to play through the Atari ST version since I've started um, trying to trying to beat it in earnest. Uh, that'd be good to get. So if I could find an X now, I could get an Extend, which is just an extra life, but it also skips a level, so it's it's kind of a double... Oh no! I lost my power-up. Okay, that's the third life lost. Let's go get that bottle. And we can eat all these clover. I think if you eat all the clover, you get an extra life. But also... Um, also, it skips to the end of the level, so... It's also one of those kinds of bonuses. Okay, this level is a lot easier with rapid fire. Still not too bad without. You just have to watch out for the <laughs> cannonballs, bowling balls, whatever they are. I don't know what those orange things are. I always thought of them as bowling balls. This level is the first level of a game called Jack and Pop is also by Taito. It was one of the really early games. Um, which also had this enemy known as a monster. Actually, both of these enemies were in it. What's that? Is that a ready? Uh, Chack and Pop played a lot differently. Oh, I've got another potion here. I should just grab it. Cheese wheels. I know when Bubsy had cheese wheels as a thing you had to avoid. So on this level, if you had played 30 levels without taking a death, you would get another secret bonus room, but it's the same secret bonus room in this version, which is weird. Okay, that's 
I was going to get the blue cross, which would have flooded the screen, but the extend is better because I get an extra life. Same result. Same result, but better. So this stage, I sort of wait in the middle, because they're going to filter left and right like that. Um, and then after that, it gets a little more chaotic. I want to pop this one before it gets out and it becomes angry. That was cutting it awfully close. If I stay too long on the ground, I'll be likely to get in their fire. I could go grab that cherry bomb. Just because it's fun to blow up the level. Alright, so this level is very mean. If you're really lucky, an item like the cherry bomb or something will appear in here. Nope, I'm getting an ice cream sandwich. So I want to drop in... No, nope, I failed. And now I probably won't get back there in time. Candy... See, now I got a fast one in there. So this level tends to eat up a few lives. Sometimes I get lucky. If you have rapid fire, this level's a lot easier. It's just really hard to time the timing of, you know, seven of these enemies bouncing around in the box. I mean, they're, they're technically predictable, but it's just not easy to predict them. So that was my first continue needed. Uh, hopefully I can... okay. So it should be fine now. So if you have rapid fire, this is a lot easier. Sometimes, sometimes I can jump in there and get them all. Not this time. Uh, the other thing that's funny, this is true of the arcade as well, but... Um, if you get a continue uh, in one player mode, you don't really have any time to uh, put in another quarter. Oh! Okay, they're angry and they're getting out. <laughs> oh, maybe I'll just grab that. I've been getting a lot of these potions. I don't usually get so many of them. Especially not in a row, but sometimes it happens. It's very random. Um, anyhow, what was I saying? You have to... Basically, on your last death, you have to be holding the button to continue. Or you will not. And those seem impossible to get. I would need a bubble to bounce up there. Uh, so I had to learn to be holding the button when I die, otherwise I won't continue. In two-player mode, it doesn't really matter, because the second player will usually not die at exactly the same time, and they'll have time to cover you fishing a quarter out of your pocket and everything you need to do. But, um... Yeah, it's just kind of really weird from a single-player perspective, I think. Grab this E before I... Oh! I think I want that teapot. So the teapot... Red teapot gives me... Looks like rapid pot fire. And long bubbles. And fast bubbles. I think it gives me everything. Is it the same as a golden teapot? I thought that's what a golden teapot gave me, but... Not sure. There's at least four different colors of teapots. This level tends to be a problem. And the problem is that you can't jump up there. You have to jump off a bubble. But your bubble isn't usually enough to get you up here. You have to wait for it to kind of 
bounce up in just the right way. Wow, okay. So, I almost never get that correct. I think I'm gonna get a hurry up in a moment, but... Oh no, I got the red slipper. Which makes me go fast. Which is maybe good, but... Also makes it harder to play, kind of. So it's a, a cursed slipper. It's like the speed up in Super R type or Gradius. Okay, do I have rapid? I have rapid fire, so this level will be easy. Dealing with those three at once is always hard. Um, with regular abilities, but since I got the rapid fire, this level was easy. So I'm actually... If I could stock two more lives, I think you max out at eight lives. I think when it visually maxes out, you you're, you don't actually collect new lives. I'm not sure. Um, so this level is a lot different in the arcade. Because um, you can move through walls slightly differently in this version. Which means I can just kind of walk up through here. In the arcade version, like, you can't go through a gap like that. But in the, Or this. Like, you can't jump up here and then go that way. You have to approach all of these by jumping... You can only jump straight up into a wall, but you can't move sideways through it. In this one, you can move sideways through a wall. It's hard to explain what all the rules are, but they're just slightly different in this version. <laughs> in a way that makes it some of the things a lot easier. Oh no. Um, the other thing which seems to be consistent with all versions I've played is that while bouncing on bubbles is a required technique, um, bubbles always have a chance to pop when you bounce on them. So you could get lucky and bounce all the way up like that, or it could pop halfway up on you. Um, so they can be a bit touchy. If you learn a technique, you can kind of leave yourself a ladder of bubbles on a wall. Uh, which I was trying to do right there, but didn't quite pull it off. Okay. Probably gonna have a hurry up on this screen. I usually do. Oh! Okay. Uh, I think that was a purple teapot just appeared underneath me. That's what a purple teapot does, it just explodes the whole screen. So normally I would have had to break one of the fire bubbles when it passes over the column, so I could drop it down in there. 40th level, so if I had been playing No Death, there would be a third secret room here. Oh, wow. It is hard to avoid those ones. Uh, and I'd better break those bubbles before they get out. And this one's gonna get out soon, too. Hi there, Duke Donuts, how's it going? Just playing some Bubble Bobble. And hi, F.A. Hickman, I forget if I said hi, but... Hello again, perhaps? This is a game I have to concentrate on. Well, it does have a pause button, but it's the F1 key. So I have to reach out to touch it. This is one of those levels where they just drew something. Put a few enemies in it. Okay, this level is always terrible. Um, so they're really hard to approach when they're on this level, but when you let them into the open area at the top here, they'll just throw fireballs at you like that. So, uh, I'm gonna 
thank the game for giving me a cherry bomb. And hope I get it before I die. There we go. <laughs> uh, if you have rapid fire this level, I think you have a better chance of getting through it alive, but... It's not... It's one of the more chaotic levels. At least I don't have a good strategy for it yet. So this level is the figure of Chacken from Chack and Pop. Uh, I believe I mentioned Chack and Pop on level 25, which was basically the first level from that game. Um, Chack and Pop plays differently. You kind of stick to the ceiling or the floor, and you try and... Um, you have to blow up cages that are trapping your hearts. And... Um, that's Chack and Pop. <laughs> and then these, these, um, these purple shark things, they're called Monstas. Um, they chase you around, and you can blow them up with your bombs. So I always thought this was just a slouching man with a hook for a head when I was a kid, because I had never seen Chack and Pop. I'm not sure if there was a version of Chack and Pop in this part of the world. Pop that bubble, or it gets mad. <sighs> Anyhow, Chack and Pop is is cute. It's a game that kind of set the style for this game, like I think it was a big inspiration for it, but um, it's not, I wouldn't call it a great game, but it's kind of, it's cute. It's worth trying a little bit. This game, on the other hand, um, I often feel might be the greatest game ever made. I've been enjoying it a lot lately. <laughs> I'm not sure the Atari ST version is the best version of it, but it's a good version. It's certainly not a bad version in my view. There are some problems with it, but there are a lot of problems with the arcade version. There are problems with the NES version as well. I'm not sure if there's a version I'd call perfect, but it's... Still an amazing game in many different versions. All right, so that bubble on the left is going to be hard to pop. Um, oh no! I hope it doesn't fall into the O. Oh, I got it. Okay, so my strategy has been to like cover the bubble with more bubbles and then pop them, and then sometimes they break it by association, like there's a... bubbles have a chance to pop nearby bubbles. But sometimes a dog can... one of those spring doggy things can fall into the O of ouch, and they are really, really hard to get out of there. Um, and that happened to me and my dad a couple times when playing. It hasn't happened to me playing it lately. Ah. Oh. That's the other thing. When you're trying to bounce on a bubble, it's only a chance to bounce on the bubble. So sometimes you're holding up to jump, but you still don't you still fall through. Bubble just pops. Bubbles do what they want. See if you can if you if you ascend while you keep making bubbles, um, that's kind of the optimal technique I find because you have bubbles to fall back on, maybe. Almost lost it there. Okay. So I'm down two credits. I'm almost halfway through the game. I'd say that's pretty good. 
So this game doesn't have passwords, it just has eight credits. Four lives each. Or really, I should say nine credits, because you start with one. This level is tremendously harder in the arcade. Uh, because you can't do what I'm about to do. Which is sit here and jump up through the wall and attack them all like that. Or maybe you can. Maybe I forgot to do that when I was playing through the arcade version a few days ago, but I think... Oh, you know what it is? You can't fall into this location. It is too tight to fit into in the arcade. It doesn't let you pass through walls in the same way. Um, but it's like the perfect solution to this level <laughs> in this version. But I don't know. Like, the way the walls work in the arcade is really fussy and weird. So here's another place where, if you've played perfectly with no deaths, it will give you a secret door on this level that skips the next 20 levels. But, I had a death as early as stage 10, so... Once, once you have one death, you are locked out of the secret stuff path forever. But this is the last stage with the secret thing on it. It's 20, 30, 40, 50. Have the four secrets. And they're not critical or anything, they're just kind of neat. They have a secret alphabet on them. Spill out a message that's basically just tips for beating the boss. In super cryptic form. Um... And in the arcade, it gives... If you beat the game in two-player mode in the arcade, it gives you a secret code in the hidden alphabet that you have to get to a secret area to be able to decode. And you enter that code, and you can play hard mode of the game. And if you beat hard mode of the game in two-player, you get the true ending, uh, where the, the end boss turns into your parents or something like that. I don't know, it's a bit odd. Okay, this level went well. I'm working on my jumping through the ceiling technique. I think I'm starting to get the hang of it. The NES version is pretty good. Um, I haven't played it as extensively. Well, I've, I think I've played every level more than once, <laughs> so I don't know. I have played it a bit, but not recently. Um, I've been planning to play the NES version as well. There's a disappointing thing about the NES version in that it has a software bug that makes the entire screen of the game take a reddish tint for the entire game. Um, which makes me Or wait, is that Bubble Bobble? Maybe that's Bubble Bobble 2 that has that bug. One of those two games has a bug like that. Where the whole game looks a little bit red. And it should not. Um, so the first time I beat this game, I didn't really beat it. Um, me and my dad, we got through level 99. It was like the second or third time we'd ever gotten to level 99. Uh, but we, we finally figured out how to get through it. It's a really tricky, puzzly level. So I can't get this giant... I guess that's an apple. Oh, can I get it? Yes! Um, the game crashed. The boss loaded, I saw it for like a couple frames, and then the game crashed. And I think it's because... Um, yeah, you can't add the second player in at the last minute. So I never got to see the boss. 
I, well, I got to see the boss, but I never got to see the ending. I don't think we would have beaten the boss that time, but... Um, I, I never got to play it. I just knew there was a boss. I knew it had some creepy music, which I heard a little bit of it before it crashed. And it was super spooky, but we considered the game beaten, because we didn't think we were ever going to see it, so... We're like, okay, well, we did it. <laughs> and that was it. It turns out this game uh, doesn't have good and bad endings, it just has one ending. Which is a weird ending. Um, which I'm hoping to get to tonight. I'm on good pace for it, I think. Because I got, I got to level 98 earlier today. And then I got an enemy stuck in a little letter E in the corner of the room, and I couldn't figure out how to attack them. So I lost all my remaining lives there. But I wasn't ready for the final boss either, so I would have died to the final boss as well. So I don't know. Maybe it'd be less disappointing to beat this game single player than one of the versions that tells you it's the sad end or whatever. I forget what the NES ending looks like. On the other hand, the NES version is much kinder in that it has the passwords. Oh, I can just use the T to skip this level. Get an extra life. Like, the passwords are, are really kind. Whereas in this, you just have to do the whole game. So I've got umbrellas past this level, I think the last two times I've played, and I'd forgotten what it contained. Totally different set of enemies than I was expecting. Is the next level the faucet? There's a faucet level very soon. Oh, it's BR10. I have no idea what BR10 means, but here we are. Ooh. Okay, so just not a time my drop so I don't land on the pole pole. Or the flying toast, whatever you want to think it is. I believe the official name is Pole Pole. Okay, this level's tricky because it's got these Vaders that move fast. Oh! I got a surprise french fry. It's hard to do anything about it. Alright, have a good night, Duke. Tell me the Sega Master, Ver Master System version might be the best version of the game. Um, because it has 100 extra levels or something? I don't know. And it's apparently a very faithful port. So there are many things from the arcade version that I wouldn't want faithfully ported. I prefer be a little easier. Like the way a lot of enemies uh, break out of their bubble in half a second instead of a couple seconds. Or half a minute. Or however long you usually get in other versions. But there's just so many levels where if you don't pop the enemy right away, it's a lost cause. 
Okay, that didn't go so well. Uh, there's two of these, so I should jump. There we go. Now... Let me dodge the pachinko. Okay. So this one's coming for us. That's okay, we'll just get some cookies. Instead of finishing off the last drunk. I'm really lucky I can have a one-up here. I think there's enough time. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. So basically sitting at seven credits. I haven't skipped any levels yet. No umbrellas. I mean, I've skipped levels with extend and stuff, but... There we go. I felt really clever. Or did I feel really clever? No, I felt really accomplished when, <laughs> when I get up here as a kid. Uh, I don't think I figured out a good strategy for it, but like occasionally I could... I would tend to lose a lot of lives on this level. But now I know the way. It's not too bad. This is the faucet level. Okay, I was expecting this several levels ago. Um, we have enough time to get them all. There we go. Oh, there was a yellow tea coming in. The rare yellow tea bubble. I missed it, but that's okay. It's just an extremely gradual extra life. Okay. This level is terrible. I have no good solution for it. Because the enemies fall into that trap in the middle, and then... I don't know what to do about them. Um, occasionally they jump out, but it's not super predictable. Uh, jumping down into them is really hard because... Okay, we got another potion. We've got so many... Oh, I don't know if I have time to get it now. I was in such a hurry. <laughs> I was in such a hurry twice. I lost two lives on it. Wow. So that went terrible. And I have no idea what I'm going to do about the rest of them. I can probably attack them from the inside, but it's not easy. Okay, is the drunk going to come for me? No. Or maybe it is. Okay. I'm going to get a hurry up, though. Okay, that's an inconvenient place for that bubble. I think occasionally you'll get a flame bubble for this level, which... Would be great, but it's not giving it to me today. Okay, can I get a third? Uh, okay, I didn't manage to catch that one before it fell down. My hope now is that it will fall and come to the right. There we go, okay. So I lost like three lives on this level. That's actually, I think, better than it has gone in recent attempts. So maybe that's fine. All right. 66. Okay, we got the flames we need headed for the center there. Um... Oof. Good thing that pole pulled ground stuff, that tricky edge. Okay, so I want to break one of these and not fall through, but of course the breaking of bubbles is a bit random. So... That's that. Okay, so that green E would be nice to get. And then I can take that invincibility and finish off the last pole pole.
Alright, so I have 5 times 4... 22 lives left? Okay, so I want to wait for the spring dogs to move out of the way before I begin my ascent. It's too slow anyway, okay. There, that went well. This level tends to be problem-free, but... I mean, it looks really simple at face value, and... Maybe it is? Still had problems on it now and then. Looks like I got it this time. Everything is fine. So I started the game with 36 lives, I have 23. Oh, this is another one of those nonsense levels. Twenty-two. So I've lost... Sixty-nine, run away. I've lost, um... 14 lives? Not counting the ones I gained and then lost. Okay, so this one... If you're lucky, you get a flame bubble on the side, you need it right away. And you just pop it right here. And drop it down. And I failed it. So... Oof. Okay. And this cross will clean up the bubbles for me. Um, so that was just perfect bubble timing. That's the only thing that saved me. I'm surprised I made it through that one. But it worked. I like the two torches. It's a nice motif. It made me think of the Olympics. Especially since, um... I think it was 86 Calgary hosted the Olympics, so seeing that kind of reminded me of it. This level is a terror, because you want to bounce yourself up through the side of the wall here to hit that thing, but it's almost impossible to do it. Oh, there we go, I did it. Uh, yellow teapot. That is good powers, but... It I'm gonna get a spray up here, and it's gonna be a problem. So, let me think. What do I need? So, I could try and bounce through the wall here. That's most of the enemies down. Uh... Okay, so this last one, not easy with the skeleton chasing me. But basically, I just need to bounce through the wall here. Oh, I broke my bubbles. That was probably my chance. Oh, the skeleton disappeared. <sighs> I lost all my powers. So I only lost one life on this level. That's pretty good, actually. Because I think it's a pretty hard level. Um, but yeah, like, dropping down in there is obviously 
Not a good way to go. There we go. That's what I missed. I had... I almost had a chance at that. And I just need to bounce that without breaking the bubble so I can pop that. There we go. That's what I... So if I had reacted in time to the Skell Monster, there's a bug in this version that the Skell Monster sometimes disappears. And if I had reacted to that in time, I could have taken another attempt. Oh. Didn't want to run into that pole pole. Okay. Here we go. High tech. Oh. This level, when we first got to it, me and my dad, it puzzled us a lot. We could not figure out how you were supposed to get out of the, these walls in the side. Uh, and then my dad stayed up late <laughs> playing the game after I went to bed. Like, we just like watched our lives go away on the screen, the Skell Monster would come and get us, and we had no idea what to do. And my dad, like, figured it out. He stayed up late, much later than I was allowed to stay up, and figured out that you could... this technique of blowing a bubble as you jump. Which kind of solves the problem. Okay, when I land here, this dog jumps out. There we go. Um... Okay, some water would be nice there. Oh! Okay, this will just bypass the level. This is a weird level. The puzzle it was in the arcade is broken, but it's still kind of touchy and weird to pull off. This level, it's hard to get up the side in time before they start breaking out. Actually, I'm not sure if they start breaking up before you get up there. Any AI in this game tends to react to stuff you do. And if you're above, they tend to jump up. A bowling ball. I was hoping a, a more helpful item would appear up there, but... I like the popsicles in this level. Nice that there's popsicles. I haven't skipped any levels yet. It's kind of amazing to me. Usually there's been an umbrella by now. Okay, another nightmare level. Oh! You just never know when they're going to throw the bottle randomly at you. They pause briefly before they do it. In the arcade, you could they would pull out the bottle and they would drink it for a moment, and then they would throw it, which was really neat, but I think they had to cut a bit of the animation for this version. Oh. This cluster of Vaders is... tends to be tough at the start of the level. Okay, that one's gonna get angry. Oh! Once they spread out... Kinda have time to deal with them, but... Okay, oh! I was hoping I could get that silver box, then I'd get a diamond. Which get me halfway to an extra life. This time. Is this level supposed to be shaped like one of those Vader enemies? I don't know. Okay, here's the spade level. So the Vader on the right should fall into the gap and be stuck there forever. 
which puts it mostly out of my hair. Uh, the sharks and pole poles just eventually come into good position. And, okay, so that cross would only just give me a power up for this one level, so it wouldn't really matter if I got it. It would give me fire breath till the end of the stage. Not very useful. Alright. 78. And we got 19 lives. Okay. Managed to kick out three of them on the first pass. Um, they're not going to fall inside. Okay. So, what do I do with them here? I want. Do I want them all to come this way? Maybe this will trap a few of them for me. There we go. Okay, that's perfect. Perfect. Usually take a death or two on this level, but... That worked out. I think I've got a good strategy for it now. Too bad I'm planning to win the game this time, <laughs> so I won't get to employ it again. Unless I really feel like playing this game again. This level is trickier than it looks. I come down here to hide from the sharks, and then one by one they come down. But then I gotta go after them before they pop. Okay. Let's go have a martini. There we go. 2,000 point martini. Um... I managed to get the bow tie, which... is that the fast bubble? I think that's the fast bubble, not rapid fire, but I think the bubble travels faster. I think that's what that power-up is. Never been entirely certain. This level can be a real pain because you don't have much room to maneuver and get your shot positioned. But if you wipe out most of them at the start like that, it's not so bad. Okay, so that went perfectly. We're on to the last 20 levels here. And I have 20 lives. <laughs> Twenty lives for twenty levels. So that's good. That means I've got more than half my starting lives. Okay, these two are hard to get from that side. Okay, they're gonna jump. Oh, that would have been a good opportunity to hit that one. Hopefully this one doesn't fire breathe on me. Okay. I'll probably gotta hurry up here, but probably get it in time. Okay. Oh, if I'm really lucky, I can get that silver box. And we'll have a diamond on our hands. Alright. Let's get that diamond. We'll get an extra life. 21 lives. More lives than there are levels left. Hopefully more than I need. So this level, when I was a kid, I never thought to do this. But this is the good strategy, coming up the wall. No problems. Um, I think me and my dad, what we'd do is one of us would stand so we could blow a bubble under the ladder, and then the other person would 
jump on top, and then we'd get up the ladder. I didn't even il illustrate what the problem is, but like you blow the bubble and it's hard to get on top of it in time. Oh, this level is a huge nuisance. Because um, the enemies take so long to get down here. And if you need to walk down here, which you do once or twice in the course of beating it, um, you gotta walk through all the comb, the teeth of the comb. Oh! So that enemy has barricaded themselves in the bottom there. And they're gonna be hard to deal with in that position. Okay, so we've we've bubbled them. Oh, okay, that bubble broke somehow. Wow, that level went perfectly. Guess I've got the hang of it now. I had real problems with this level <laughs> before. Now it seems not that bad. This level I do not have a strategy for. Um, if I turn and face here, I can maybe get the first three. But there's no way I can stand on that pixel again and face right. Um, so at this point, I try and... <gasps> I could just get the yellow tea and not have to think about this level. Please. Don't french fry me. Thank you. So the rest of it, I was going to try and split them up. Pick them off one at a time, but... It's really hard. Alright, we're on to Kimi. I think that's short for Kimijima, one of the developers of this game. I pulled that off better. Like, you can usually bubble a couple of them and then maybe jump on the bubble to bounce above them, pop them when they're on the other side, fall down, blow another two. But it's hard to pull off. So, that was one life lost. This is just a massive pile of sharks. And then it's hard to pop them up there. Oh, I made it. Perfect. Another perfect round. So, 87. We've got 13 levels left. 14 levels if you count the final boss. 14 levels, 21 lives. I think that's pretty good. I missed one of the butterfly bubbles. Oh, it's gonna break out. <sighs> you have... So little air control in this game, it is very hard to steer. Like, look how slow you move in the air. Um, if you have a running jump, you can continue to move in that speed, but as soon as you stop, it's like... This is how fast you move in the air. So, if you're descending toward an enemy... Um, it's not much hope in your future. Okay. So the way this level is supposed to go is a fire bubble is supposed to come up and float around kind of the path that you're seeing there. Um, but they're supposed to get stuck at certain points in the level. That's how it works in the arcade. Oh. Okay, I'm just going to take a trip. So they should get stuck at those points. Um... And you want to blow a bubble to displace them, and then they keep moving, and eventually they stop here at the top of the shaft, and you can drop them down. And that works in the arcade. In this version, it's, it can work. Um, it's a little bit weirdly touchy, and sometimes the fire bubbles don't randomly 
appear very swiftly, which is a problem. Um, this level, I think you're supposed to blow a bunch of bubbles. Oh, that was just me accidentally pressing jump. Um, I think you're supposed to blow a bunch of bubbles under the fire and then pop them um, to pop the fire once it's in the right position, but it's really hard to pull that off in this version. It's not as hard to pull off in the arcade version. It's still hard. Um, this is not a very good level in this version. It's not a great level in the arcade either, to be honest. But it's something. <laughs> it's a level. Okay. So I think I lost two lives there. Maybe three. I think just two. Eleven levels to go. Okay. This one is really cruel. I do not know how to get out, out of this opening gauntlet without taking the death. It's just... I, like, I've done it with rapid fire, but other than that possibility. Okay, so this flame will be a nuisance. It's really hard to pop. Like, why isn't that popping? Okay, it's just gonna give me a potion. I'm gonna take it. Um, but I should be able to pop that bubble with my tail. I don't know what this level's problem is. Oh, now I'm stuck here for the next 20 seconds. Little unreachable cookie break. So I used to think this was a virus, but I actually think it's an ar arcade stick. Now that somebody else pointed that out in my last stream of this game. Alright. Super Gamer. Here we go. Why did that bubble pop in midair instead of hitting that pole pole? That made no sense. I do think bubbles sometimes just pop for no reason. I don't know if that was a bug or if that's part of the design of, of bubbles just being fragile. And maybe popping sometimes. Mm, okay, this level's probably fine. Okay, I just fell through the floor. Okay, got myself out. Oh yeah, now I remember. This is what happens in this level. Uh, the enemies get stuck on the side. I guess they're... Is, if this is a boombox, maybe they're just jam into the beat there. Better go for the... Oh, and there's music that... I don't know if that's confirmation of my boombox theory, but... Definitely works with that theory. Okay, that was nice. So what are we at? 16 lives? 16 lives, 8 levels. Wait, how many extra lives did I just get? I just got multiple extra lives. Six plus twelve, so I've got eighteen lives. Eighteen lives for the last seven levels. Okay, so this one is another problem. Um, 
I don't really know how to survive this opening volley here. And then the next thing that happens is they all get stuck in the bottom of the level. And they're really hard to hit down there. Um, so that's a problem. <gasps> Cherry. Bomb. Okay, so my strategy was going to be to move all the way to the left side of the screen and try and see if I could bait them to jump up, because they seem to be able to jump up on the edge of the wall, but they never line up with these holes anywhere else. Like when they jump up here, they never get in there. So the ones at the bottom tended to be a huge problem down there. Just really hard to hit. Okay, so here we blow a bubble. This is really hard to make another bubble. Once you've blown one. Okay, there we go. Now I should be fine. Uh, if I could just hit one of these flames without dying, it would be nice. <laughs> oh! I wonder if I could just jump up here. No, if I jump up here, I can't go through the wall. I don't know what all the rules are for walking through the walls, but it is easier to walk through the walls in the Atari ST version than it was in the arcade. And I don't know what the reason is. Okay, we dodged the French fry. So these arrows are telling you you need to fall uh, down those pits, exactly. And it's hard to do this level um, one player, largely because of the time constraint. That potion is welcome. Because otherwise I'd probably take a hurry up and a death. Um, so you gotta aim left here, otherwise you get stuck in that pit forever. Which is not great. Alright, okay, so we can get one more extra life here. Puts us back to 17 lives. Now this one, I believe you can soft lock in this level. Or maybe not soft lock. I mean, you can still um, die and end your game, but um, be unable to proceed. Maybe that is a soft lock. Depends on how you define it. But if, if you break one of these water bubbles in just the wrong spot, it can get stuck. Oh, okay, that potion is a real relief. Really... Why have I gotten so many potions in this uh, playthrough? Um, but you have to kind of wait for a bubble to float up through the bottom and then bounce through the wall to get those Zenchan enemies in the middle of the screen. Um, and if you accidentally break one of the water bubbles in there, the water can't drain. And it'll just go in back and forth, and the enemy will be stuck forever, as far as I can tell. And you can't blow a bubble on it. Okay, so last time, one of these enemies got stuck in the E, and I could not attack it. So my new strategy is to guard this spot below the E, make sure they never get stuck in there. Oh no! So... Oh, where's it going? I'm sure I could get out of there. Uh, hi there, Brigand. Uh, yes, I, I did play this on my Atari ST many years ago. It was it was my favorite game when I was five years old. 
And it might be, might be my favorite game again. I'm really liking Bubble Bobble. It is such a, a wonderful game. <laughs> Alright! I didn't get here last time. And I have 15 lives. Okay, why is that flame not going down? So y you want the flame to come down so you can push it over. And then, there we go. That's exactly what I want. So now you jump over the middle, and you gotta blow a bubble at this thing at just the right time. And now... Get that one through the wall. And now I have to get these two sharks through the wall. Which I discovered earlier today when doing some investigation. You can't do it, like if you're too close to the wall, if you're like right here, you can't blow a bubble around the shark. You have to be back like a pixel or two, which is really weird. Alright, final boss. So as a kid, I got here, and I saw like a few frames of this, and it crashed right here. Okay, first death to the boss. 14 lives to go. Let's see how well I can do this. Got a dodge. So I spent some time uh, investigating this boss and just seeing what its pattern looks like. And once you know where it's going to move, uh, it's not that hard to avoid that. So I need to avoid the corner. It's big, but it it's very predictable in its motion. And this doesn't even have the extra bottles. So yeah, it crashed <laughs> right here. Uh, and we considered the game beaten. We didn't think it would ever not crash, because we pirated the game. So we, we just thought... Um, the disc was broken or whatever. There we go! I had 12 lives left. And maybe I'll get... Oh, there's the high score. <laughs> so that's it. That's Bubble Bobble. Atari ST. Congratulations, you have finished Bubble Bobble, and have found the true magic of life, love, friendship, and happiness. The end? And this is the only ending. You will get the same ending if you beat this game two-player. Uh, and I don't think this game has a true ending, like the arcade did. Hi there, Enigma Wave. Thanks for the bits. Um, yeah, so here... <laughs> but the question mark is weird. Like, why is the super drunk still here? It's like they know the super drunk is our transformed parents, but... As far as I know, there's no secret code for super hard mode to play this game again and get the true ending, so... And one player, two player doesn't seem to make a difference in what ending you get. The Amer Amiga version is exactly the same in this respect. As far as I know, I think it's like the same port. Just with different graphics code, different music code. But yeah, that's Bubble Bobble for the Atari ST. And if I press the button, I can enter my initials. So I think I usually, when I was a kid, I would put BWS. I have two middle names, William and Henry, but there's only ever room for three. So that's it. I've never done that before. I, I one player beat Tari ST Bubble Bobble. I think the arcade game is harder. Um, some of the levels, basically, some of the levels, the bubbles that the enemies are in pop really fast. Like they only give you a half a second to pop it, and that's really mean. 
Um, and jumping through walls is more restricted in the arcade. So some of the like levels where you have to maneuver through walls and stuff are more of a puzzle in the arcade than they are. They're still kind of puzzling here, but not as puzzling. Like stage 99 is a bit more rough in the arcade. So I don't know. I'd say this is an excellent version of bubble. It's an excellent bubble bobble. It has differences from the arcade. It has a few things that are missing, some like nice animations, the the secret endings and stuff. It still has the secret room, which gives a a cryptic hint about the the true ending, but there's no reason for it to have that when it doesn't give you the code that you have to decipher with the hint from the secret room, so I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of weird. So, coming up here, this is level 20. If you get to level 20 without dying once, uh, a secret door will appear instead of another random item. doesn't appear right away. And it's probably going to be... I'm not sure if it's always on the left. I think sometimes it's on the right. So I'm just going to hang out here and we're going to see the secret door in a moment. Oh! Oh! Despite dying, we still get to see it. Because I died just after it came out. If I died an instant before, it wouldn't have shown up. So here's the secret room. This is much like it is in the arcade. Um, but there's an interesting difference in that uh, you have as much time as you want here. In the arcade, eventually a monster will come out of... Um, it'll come out of the wall of this like giant gumball machine thing and it'll come after you like the Skell Monster does. Um, but in this version of the game, you have as long as you want to sit here. That monster never comes out. Uh, so as long as you don't enter this door after... The door doesn't open until you get all the diamonds. But as long as you don't enter this door, it'll stay here. And you can stay here and write all this down if you want. You can't do that in the arcade. You have a minute to look at this. So the first line is an alphabet. It looks kind of like uh, letters of the alphabet rotated and then mutated a little bit. So it's like A, B, C, D, E, F, G along the top. And then, what does it say? It says, if you want to become the old form... Is that form? Um, if you want to become the old A, B, C, D, E, F... F. Oh, the old figure. If you want to become the old figure, um, use the power of uh, use the power of your uh, f friendship and. and fight with me. So if you want to become the old figure, use the power of your friendship and fight with me. So this is the end boss of the game. Um, this this hint was in the arcade, like this secret room was in the arcade. Uh, but this is sort of a cryptic hint that you need to beat the end boss two player. That's one of the conditions uh, for getting the true ending. And when it says, if you want to become the old figure, it means you used to be a human and you got turned into a dinosaur. So that's, that would, that's what it means. If you want to turn back into a human, you have to beat this game two-player. So that's the secret message. Uh, when I was a kid, I saw this after months of playing. Like, this was the first time we'd ever done 20 levels flawless. Wasn't expecting to see a new thing like this at all. And it was just like, what was this? And I, I remember, like, we accidentally went out the door, so we just, like, collected all the diamonds, and I was staring at it, and I think my dad went around and collected all the diamonds, and then, as soon as you touched the door, you are out of here, and then I was like, will I ever see that again? What's it, what is that? 
And I thought about this for like weeks afterward. <laughs> what could this be? Um, so in the arcade, there's three of these secrets on le level 20, 30, 40, if you don't die through all of those floors. And then on level 50, there's a secret door that uh, just lets you bypass right to level 70, just to save time, because I guess you're an expert at that point. Um, but in this version, um, there's only one secret room, so there's only one message. All three of the rooms have the alphabet, but then they have a different message. The second one's supposed to have a lightning bottle, and there's sort of a message about using the lightning to defeat the boss. And then the third message, um, I forget what it is. You can look it up on, I think, Strategy Wiki for Bobble Bobble. It has a really good rundown of all the secrets. Um, and then finally, when you beat the game in two players, there's like a code that it displays in that alphabet. And then it says, beat the first 20 levels, flawless. Or something like that. Or no miss, I think it calls it. Beat the first 20 levels, no miss. And you will see A, B, C, D, dot, dot, dot. That's what it says, something like that. Um, so if you beat the game one player in the arcade, it tells you that you should play with a friend. And it sends you back to like level 75 or something like that. Um, and then, it, or maybe it's level 50. It sends you back a ways. And then if you beat the game two player, it tells you that. It tells you 20 levels no miss for a secret. Um, and then if you do 20 miss or 20 levels no miss, you get the secret room and you can get the alphabet, which you could use to decode that pass <laughs> password that was encoded in that alphabet at the ending of the two-player game. Or you can beat the two-player game again. I don't know. Gotta get back there somehow or recover that information. How people were supposed to do this in the arcade, especially when you can only look at the secret room for like a minute, I don't know. But I guess people did. It was enough. You could do it. And it is a game you can master and get really good at. So people definitely did it. Might cost you several dollars. But it's doable. Um, but this version, so it leaves in the secret room. It leaves in the alphabet, but the alphabet's only for decoding that one secret room. If you get to stage 30, there will be another door. No miss stage 30, there's another door, but it takes you to the same room with the same message instead of the three rooms. Same with stage 40. And then stage 50, it just has the door that warps you to stage 70. So that part's missing. The three endings and the trail of secrets that leads to them. But the cool secret room is still there. And for me as a kid, that was profound enough just seeing that by accident out of nowhere. Sorry, maybe the music's annoying to hear it, like, sped up. Um, but yeah, that's, that's Bubble Bobble for the Atari ST. So, <laughs> thanks for allowing me to demonstrate that one extra thing.